Hi, everyone. It's very nice to be here, and thank you so much for, for having me, Anna, and Trip in Blue, and everyone else that is involved in the organization of this. Um, it's great to have the opportunity to be here with you today to talk uh, about the digital side of the denim world. Um, and I'm going to tell you a little bit more about my journey so far and everything that I've learned about digital denim um, and what we see today, um, which is that 3D is changing the denim world. And we're going to look at what it takes to get ready um, and also a little bit what the journey that we've gotten to today. My name is uh, Jorgen Sevild. I'm with Bandicoot Imaging Sciences and we've created a denim-specific uh, fabric digitization technology called Indicon 3D. My journey with denim started in with physical denim fabrics. Uh, I started uh, working in a denim fabric mill in China many, many years ago, uh, where I more or less accidentally ended up there as an, as an engineer myself, we're working very much with a sales and marketing. And I got to see, I would say, really everything that goes into the, to the, to the production process of denim fabrics with a, a, a vertical fabric mill from, from yarn spinning and all the way into fabric uh, weaving and fabric finishing throughout dyeing and all the processes involved. And I also got to take part in a lot of trips around the world to learn a lot about the process of making denim fabrics. Coming from a technology background myself, I, I, I've only managed to really stay within the, the denim fabric world and working with the physical fabrics for a few years before, well, until I really started to see the opportunities uh, that technology could, could have or, or the benefits that technology could provide to the denim industry. And it was really with this that I, I started experimenting with what, uh, looking back at, at, at this process today, looks like a, a bit of a shortcut to, to creating digital garments or digitizing denim garments. And so I used the, everything that I've learned up until this point, my interest in 3D and technologies and, um, and gathered together also other people that I knew and, 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 and built a 3D garment scanning facility in an office that we haven't had at the time in Hong Kong. The process that we used to digitize garments it was essentially that we took a finished garment um, straight there from a uh, fabric mill or a garment manufacturer that we worked with, put them on a mannequin, and we shot about 500 photos of, of the product. With these 500 photos, we would then use software technology and, and, and all uh, these technologies to, uh, applications to create a 3D object which you can see in the middle here, a little bit lower resolution. Um, and in this process of taking all these photos, we would also capture how the fabric would look like. And in a quite of a messy way, you can see here on the right, how that fabric would look like um, is as a digital texture file so that we can then texturize a 3D model to make it look like a 3D uh, denim jeans or, or a garment. And then, Roughly a year later, after having really worked through this process and, and, and streamlined the way that we were doing this, uh, we then created my own first part of a pair of 3D jeans. And um, and it was, it was quite cool at the time to really see how this garment that we've now dressed up on a mannequin, uh, we were able to digitize it, use, taking all these photos, uh, and we can then create this nice looking uh, 3D version of a pair of jeans, uh, which led us to really think even further about this and what can we now do with this this um, this 3D model and this this cool new thing that we would created for the denim industry, and that's where at the time in, in 2017 we launched this new augmented reality uh, 3D based mobile application where fabric mills and garment factories and brands could then use an application like this to then scan their garments uh, with us that in the technology and the setup that we had built. Um, you can then take these 3D models of the jeans and you can bring them into this 3D application. And then anyone that had a phone could then, with this camera view, could project or see how the, um, the, 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 the pair of jeans would look like in 3D um, right in front of them in this camera. They could also then change for some of the garments that have been digitized or scanned in multiple washes. You can then swap between wash one, two, three, for example, and you can get a lot more information about the, the, the fabric that had been used or the garment. And in some of these uh, cases, you'd be able to then request denim sample fabrics as well, directly for these uh, these products that you, you've, you'd seen in the application. We got to a point where, as you can see here, we we made a, 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 a we made this 
this this pair of 3D jeans and a lot of people thought it was cool and, and it was dancing and doing all these things and this was a, an animation that you see here all the way back from, from 2017 and it, you could say that we were successful in some ways but we didn't feel very successful with, with bringing anything that would, would influence the way we actually make uh, make make denim and, 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 and jeans so we really felt like we had to take a, a, a big step back we didn't really just want to create some gimmicky marketing technology we wanted to to create something that actually made an impact on on the way that denim is made so something that you're I'm sure most of you are very familiar with is we, we went we took a big step back we simplified uh, a lot of our understanding of, of how the product is made and we then looked at uh, at the denim supply chain we, we went back to looking at fibers um, and how fibers are turned into yarn and how yarn is turned into fabric and so forth all the way across the entire value chain here. Um, and we started to look at, uh, you know, really break up how, how the actual physical product is made and then using that as the starting point for looking at that technologies that are available. It was immediate to us that we saw that the move to digital for the fashion industry is inevitable it was just the beginning of these things starting to happen um, and we, we realized that was the very early stages of of um of this move into digital we saw that brands had started building more campaigns around this we saw that there was technologies available on the market that were now touching into um and, and supporting the way that we were making the garments and the, the leading technologies that we could see at the at the time, and which are also leading today, uh, were these three D garment design solutions. So many of you might be familiar with Clo three D or Browseware, and also Optitex or Style three D. Or there's a, a whole long list of of technologies that are available on the market that helps and supports the process of essentially taking a digital garment pattern and then virtually stitching that together into a garment and whereas these technologies are very advanced and and there's been been great progress in this in this field and um, we started breaking down this garment and we looked at these technologies was mainly just looking at the the garment and the pattern and how it was stitched together and creating this 3d object and looking at the anatomy you could say of, of a 3d model and how a 3d model is, is created you have this object and then you have the the texture which is very similar to how we have the fabric in the physical supply chain and you, you have the garment that you then create based off this this fabric and we realized that there was very, a lot of focus on the garment making but not so much focus on on the actual fabric itself and of course seem seem natural was also that digital garments are also made of fabrics or digital fabrics but there was very little focus on these digital fabrics and so we felt like there was a great opportunity to dive deeper into this and again thinking back into this process where we started was that we had created a 3d model here of the finished garment we can say all the way at the end of the production side here uh, at the end of the garment and now that we've we found a whole series of tools that can help to digitize the the garment making or virtualize the garment making process but if you make a digital garment out of very poor quality digital fabrics you can think of yourself as, as making a, a physical garment, it would give you a very low quality garment if you use very low quality fabrics because the, most of what the garment is made of is the fabric. So really diving deep into this, we, we realized that there was a few problems with the way that 3D fabric digitization was being done. It required very expensive dedicated equipment. Um, you had to pay several tens of thousands of dollars to buy this dedicated machinery and once you got the machinery you had to train people on how to use this um, there was a lot of human interpretation and, and artistic skill you can almost see and, and then trying to once you got it digitized trying to make it look like the real fabric and very often you ended up making it look less like the real fabric because there was no kind of scientific interpretation a lot of time was needed for rework and all of these processing that needed to happen. And so once you created something, you might have to go back and recreate it. And it was a big lack of flexibility. So once you bought one machine, you couldn't digitize fabrics in other sizes and you needed, let's say, a, a new machine to do so. And because of all these reasons above here, it just didn't really scale. And it was very challenging to bring this into, as we thought, into the fabric mill. 
and we started a project uh, back back then and, and early on in 2018 um, in 2019 uh, with several denim f both fabric mills and garment factories and everyone said that with what was existing on the market at the time they said with the fab fabrics was being digitized they said it just didn't look good at all it didn't look like like denim fabrics and so we realized that there was a big challenge here that that um that no one at the time was really solving and based on all of this we created indicon 3d and i think it's fair to say in, in the community like where we're, we're gathered here today um denim fabrics are not like any other fabrics both with the culture and community that exists around it, but also the language and the vocabulary that we use. And, you know, we talk about shades and slubs and fades and casts and all of these different things in denim that we don't talk about any other places. And that is really just this, this that we built Indicon around. Compared to, you know, all of these challenges that we were faced with earlier on, um, all you needed with Indicon and, and, and the way that we built Indicon is just you need a regular camera, you need a light source and a flash that you kind of attach to the camera you have on the camera, um, and you need one of these scanning charts from Bandicoot. This scanning chart is used to digitize the area that you see inside the chart here, and the light that comes off the flash is then sent off to the fabric and reflects off the fabric and the camera then helps to capture exactly how it is that that light reflects off the fabric. Process sounds very scientific and there's a lot of scientific technology behind it, but it's actually very simple to do. Any Everything that a user has to do here is just you use the camera, take pictures of the fabric from nine different angles, from one from each side and one from each corner. Very simple, take less than a minute to do. Take the image files out from the camera and then drag and drop them directly onto the Bandicoot's website. We take care of all the processing and everything technical that needs to happen. The color adjustments is adjusted with white balance so that you have the same color adjustment that you would find in a, um, in a light box if you put the fabric in a physical light box. Um, and we would then generate and create the 3D fabric directly out from our technology. And everything happens in the cloud online. So you can you do this from anywhere in the world. There's really no specialized skill needed. Anyone can shoot these photos. It's inexpensive and you're just using regular equipment. And there's absolutely no compromise on quality where Bandicoot all the way from the beginning set out to create really just nothing, nothing below the quality was already existing. But again, of course, pushing the quality further on and specifically here for denim where you have indigo and shades and all these colors that we have to make sure that we get, we get accurate. It's very affordable and very scalable. Um, it works with all the 3D fashion technologies available on the market. And specific for Indicon and for, for, for what we've built here was with, with denim in mind. Uh, this was very important for us. And looking at this as the 3D, uh, let's say as 3D is changing the fashion world in, in, in general, we don't want to lock anyone up in, in having to use uh, some kind of software to create their 3D uh, garments and these things. We wanted to make sure that Indicon and Bandicoot's Fabrics works with any type of uh, software solution on the market, whether you're using Browseware or Clo or Adobe or Optitex or any of these solutions to create your garment collections. Or if you use material marketplaces like Swatchbook or 3D visualizations like Virtual Touch or all sorts of tools on the market, we wanted to make sure that the fabric files, digital fabric files work directly with all. We've experimented uh, with, for example, creating digital shade blankets where you can digitize, uh, for example, uh, a fabric in several different shades. And we can then automatically generate these kind of images as you see here, where you've, you've, we've, um, with a fabric mill over here in the fabric mill, digitized very simple with that approach that I showed you of taking these photos, same fabric in eight different shades, automatically then created this kind of uh, image to then visualize how the fabric washes down. And this can then be used in presentations to customers and, and, uh, and online for marketing and all sorts of things, which has been very important, let's say even during COVID in the last, um, in the last few years, where suppliers, fabric mills and garment factories have not been able to travel to meet directly with customers. And it's been very important to be able to digitally present the products accurately in, in a good way. And talking about, you know, be, especially COVID and how all of this have accelerated this process, the big impact that we now see have changed with this ability now to create digital fabrics so easily is that 
product design and product development, as we've seen, was already enabled with all of these amazing tools like Clow and Browseware and so forth, where you can create the 3D garment and the object. But in order to create an accurate 3D product, you would have to have these high-quality digital fabrics. But because there were so many difficulties with, with creating these earlier, now that we've made this extremely simple and scalable and affordable, you can now uh, uh, very easily roll this out. And a fabric mill can do it in-house. A brand and designer could do it from anywhere. You can use the existing tools on the market to do product design and development. And you can create these accurate 3D product visualizations that can then go directly into production. So you can communicate and you can say, you know, this is what I would like to have. This is exactly the visual of the product that I've designed and I've made all the changes and it comes out with a, a tech pack even directly from some of these softwares. It looks photorealistic and you can go to production to communicate what you would like to, to make from a brand site. And of course, also you can then, even more interestingly, you can take these visualizations that now look photorealistic and, and you can give customers, early customers, access to showcasing exactly how the product that you're planning to look like is going to be, is going to be made. So some of the benefits of working in 3D, as we see, is these highlights on, on, on benefits to design and product development, where we increase speed, we can reduce the need for physical samples. We're not going to take it completely away because hand feel is incredibly important, but you can make some really good decisions based on these digital, um, digital visualizations before we have to go into physical sample creation and prototyping. You don't have to ship fabrics all around the world uh, in very early stages. And very interestingly is that when you work digitally, you're essentially not, imagine whenever you're creating a new version of a, of a garment, you're not consuming um, two yards of fabric every time you do so. You've already just digitized a swatch of the fabric and now you can create unlimited versions of the garment you have in mind uh, and you're not really consuming any resources. You can save costs um, and there's a whole series of benefits. In sales and marketing, we're essentially unlocking new business models. So now for brands, as we showed on the previous slide, we can now enable this type of on-demand manufacturing and personalization because you can give customers an idea of how the product is going to look like before it's even made. And as we see here, this is a, a, a company that we've been in touch with. They've created a technology where, where um, you can render the garment out onto real photos of people and you can see exactly how that would look like either on let's say models used for e-commerce or um the consumers themselves we see some of the early fabric mills that we worked with uh, they're now able to offer with indicon directly from their website offering digital denim fabrics uh, on a whole collection of them where they've digitized all the fabrics on demand um in the mill and um, th these fabrics are then compatible with all of their customers' different uh, softwares that they're then using to do the garments. Um, and not only do they have to, let's say, they don't have to create the entire collection up front and digitize, let's say, all the 100, 200, 300 new fabric developments, they can really just uh, scan and digitize the fabric whenever the customer is asking them for it. So we're really covering all of the digital denim fabric needs with this technology. So in order to equip you for what your customers, if you're a supplier and work with brands that are working in 3D already, um, what's very important is now this ability to create these digital fabric files so that you can then have a, essentially if you want to create and ask you to create more and more fabric, uh, digital fabrics, you can then build and scale your collection of 3D ready denim fabrics. You can take these on request fabric digitizations, uh, essentially whenever your customers ask you, you can then in the matter of hours provide them with um, you know, an, a very accurate 3D ready fabric file. And you can then build uh, digital fabric libraries or 3D virtual showrooms and really use this to, to, to do sales and marketing and product and development in a whole new way. We see that um, the modern 3D fashion designers, you know, kit um, is complete with these tools that we've now been discussing here. And we've seen how from an overview linked back to the physical supply chain and with the digital supply chain, how 3D is changing the denim world. And you can save time, materials and money. You can work from anywhere because it's all digital uh, until you actually start making that the physical product. And you know, let's say that we're going into this future, this fairly unknown future and at the moment right now of, of the significant of the metaverse and, you know, digital platforms and, and what's next and what's coming. In any case, what is coming here is that when you're creating 
digitally and in 3D, you will be so much more prepared than if you're not. So once we actually get into this future and there will be more and more uh, requests and demand uh, for these new platforms, if you're used as technologies today, um, you, you can really be prepared for that. And um, that's, I think, most of what I wanted to share with you here today. And if you have any questions, um, please, please connect with me, connect with me or, or feel free to feel ask, free to ask any questions now after as well. As well. I'll, be I'll be very happy to, happy to answer, the answer the questions as best as I can today. today. And, um, and um, if you want, to, if you want to connect with me here, here and, and ask me questions outside of this, outside of this please feel free, please feel free to, uh, to, to, reach to, to reach out with me. Bueno, a todos que tengan dudas y que quieran preguntar directamente a Jordan, ahí está su mail en el top de, del chat, eh, su mail y su nombre y el nombre de la empresa. Y nosotros también vamos a hablar de otras empresas que él mismo le dijo, ¿no? El Incom, 3D y todo. Bueno, pero ahora, por ahora vamos a traer acá a Jordan, que nos, se va a contactar con nosotros para poder contestar. Hello. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. Very good. Very good. I realized we, we spoke a lot of de in detail about the digital denim world. So if anyone has questions, I think it's good to, I'm, I'm here to clarify. Oh, it's, thank you so much for your time and, and for your patience. Uh, really, it's it's very nice when you when we hear about this kind of knowledge, but we know that the, the person that they are speaking know a lot of, uh, about it. So thank you for that. <laughs> Uh, Thank you for me. A todas las personas que están en el chat pueden preguntar directamente a Joran. No hace falta que, que sea en inglés. Pueden preguntar acá y o en el Q&A, ¿eh? que también pueden poner en el Q&A. Pero avisen solamente. Si vamos por el chat, vamos directamente por el chat. ¿OK? Um, OK. Tenemos una, tenemos una, una pregunta. Um, primero en, en español. Si el, la tecnología funciona solamente con denim o se puede poner cualquier otro tipo de tejido. So, they are asking about if the technology is only about denim or they can do without, uh, with other textiles. Mm, good question. Um, so, we, we, it can be used for any, any type of textiles or, or material. Um, the technology itself can scan, um, can scan wovens or knits or non-denims uh, all, all alike. But it's really that we saw these special uh, challenges with denim because color is so important and also because we have uh, wet and dry processing or the, the laundry and finishing. Uh, but it, it generally works with all sorts of fabrics. So, funciona para todo, funciona para cualquier tipo de tejido, punto, lana, lo que sea. La diferencia ahí que le mostró que con denim, nada, se ve el lavado, las matices, el tipo de gastado. Entonces, nada, es como más amplio explicar sobre eso, ¿no? And Jordan, um, about the, mm -hmm. um, the o sea, if, if I am a brand, I can use in my e-commerce channel, channel, right? If I am a yes. denim textile, Where can I use this technology? Just for they understand that it's not only for commercializing uh, products. It's about everything. Exactly. Very good question. And 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 so to clarify a little bit is that uh, the digital denim file that we talk about, uh, you know, the, the, this uh, this uh, file or this digital fabric that you can create with Bandicoot's technology, it is like what we often call a digital twin, or it's a digital, really the digital version that hold all of this information about the physical fabric. So we scan it and then we turn it into a digital version. And once we have this digital version, as I uh, briefly also explained in, in the presentation, it works with all of these different software. So for example, brands, can then uh, request the fabric file uh, and ask the fabric mill, for example, or a garment factory, if they have a, a fabric as a digital fabric. And then the, the fabric mill can send this file uh, immediately over to the brand and then they can suddenly use this digital fabric to uh, you know to try to see how their garments or, or the collection that they have already been planning for the next season how would this look like in this particular fabric and um, and of course using this technology would then be uh, allowing us to give a very accurate representation so fabric mills can use this both to send almost what we call the digital samples um, is a one important benefit that you'll be able to save some Some, some physical samples, uh, but also to be able to use it for presentation purposes in, uh, let's say, PowerPoints or Zoom, or really be able to, to use it for sales and marketing, mostly. 
Perfect. Eh, pregunté a él un poco sobre cómo nosotros podemos usar siendo empresas textiles o marcas, ¿no? Entonces, él un poco contesta que es tipo, primero que el mundo está cambiando, nosotros sabemos que tenemos que adaptarnos a ese tipo de tecnología. Dos, después que tenemos ese trabajo híbrido, entonces eso facilita tanto para la parte comercial, tanto para el showroom virtual, tanto para eh, en la parte física o, o del e-commerce, ¿no? Entonces, ahí lo que se hace es escanear y poder mandar adentro de un, un portafolio de tejidos que la gente que pueda usar adentro de un PDF, que pueda, nada, revisar su muestra si realmente es de ese tejido que quieren, porque muchas veces uno se lo imagina, principalmente en denim eso pasa mucho. Yo me imagino mi textil allá adelante, como quiero, pido la muestra de tejido y cuando viene es totalmente distinto, una cosa no tiene nada que ver con otra. Eso facilita. Y eso también tiene su pata en lo que sea el impacto que generamos, porque dejas de hacer muestras. Te dejas un cachetín de hacer muestras, ¿no? So, eso está bueno. Um, no, I was just explaining to them because sometimes we can have like, uh, the control for the sample impact as well because we mm. are going to sample less than we, we really do for now. Yes. Because if you think in an Inditex group, you have mm. like yeah. another brand only with samples, the quantity of mm. samples. Mm. So that, that's good for understand because sometimes in Brazil, Argentina, Colombia, they have a massive brand and work a lot doing samples, but all, only with frustrations, like, a, mm, I don't like so much, I imagine another thing, but with this kind of technology, they can do whatever they want. So. Mm. And uh, we have one more question. Huh? How long do you think this technology can take to get here in Latin? We're ready. <laughs> yeah, it's a good question. So, so be, because all, all you need to use the technology is just a camera. Um, it can be used. Uh, if you have a camera now, we can start now. If you send me an email, uh, then we can start uh, in 10 minutes. Um, so all you need is just uh, a camera. And then everything else that really turn these normal pictures, because you take nine pictures of the fabric so that we can see how the light can reflect from the fabric and we can give this very realistic presentation of the fabric. Um, but if you have the camera, then everything else is just software. And then we have all of this in on our website. So you can log into the website, you drag the, the pictures inside, and then we will take care of all the all the things done like magic. So um, it's, it's already in Latin America. Perfect. Uh, as a technology, this is the good way. So we yes. can have it here. <laughs> Eh, él, eh, le preguntó Zuli, gracias Zuli por tu cuestión pongan en el chat las últimas preguntas porque tenemos tres minutitos más ¿eh? Eh, Zuli preguntó ¿cuánto, cuánto tiempo nosotros imaginamos que eso puede llegar acá en Latinoamérica y él contesta, ya hoy si quieren porque necesitan solamente una cámara o sea, ellos tienen un proceso que es una cámara muy sencilla después envían como un tipo de, de estandarización de papel donde vos vas a sacar la foto con ese papel que ellos te pueden enviar o vos podés imprimir en una impresión buena, ponele. Y con esas nueve fotos que sacan, eh, envían a ellos o suben directamente a la, a la plataforma y la plataforma, juntamente con el grupo que tiene Bandcut, eh, te transforma el diseño, te lo digitaliza con volumen, con 3D, ¿no? Y eso ayuda mucho para que todo nada, sea más fácil. Y ahí vos podés aplicar, sea en tu producto del diseño 3D, sea en tu sitio de, de, de red vendedor de tejido, por ejemplo, también lo podés, ¿no? Ahí hay una otra pregunta. Ah, sacaron. Había un puesto, pero sacaron. Puede ser, espera, déjame ver. Sí. No, volví a poner. Ahí, Zuli. No, ahí, ahí está. Um, sí. ¿Vos pensás? Bueno, voy a... Eh, Zuli está diciendo acá que, que para ellas, los compradores o la, las empresas locales, no van a recibir eso, como de una forma, eso de una forma como muy receptiva, vamos a decir. Porque, ¿cómo podemos asegurar el fit de ellos? Bueno, es muy buena tu pregunta. Y me parece que está bueno pasar a él. So, Joran, eh, Suli uh, continued with us and said that maybe in Latin America, <laughs> gracias, Suli, maybe in Latin America, the buyers or even the local retailers is not received the, it well, like um, uh, They not understand. They are not ready to understand the platform or the the the, the, tele, the technology. So how we can talk with them about the fit, the shape, for example? How they can mm. do 
And I think that's it's the most the communication about each other, the, the brand, the technology, the user, right? Yeah. No, it's a, it's a very it's and it's very interesting because it's 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 a very new technology. So we see a lot of people, and especially you know denim is very it's a very special fabric and very special product. So so of course we want we 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 have some resistance to wanting to change, but it's very interesting with Latin America that we have already seen some uh, some brands, some e-commerce uh, platforms, and some brands that are really uh, using the internet to do business in new ways. Also in in in, in Latin America, we have. Uh, they have already been coming to us and and they're they're wondering if they can use our technology to digitize fabrics but in the end we see that the brands can do it but the, where, where the big opportunity is is if the fabric mills and the suppliers can digitize the fabrics and then give the fabrics to the brands um, in this way where they can then design with it so I think it's it, it's uh, I, I would love to hear um you know if anyone uh, has any 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 resistance or you know don't think that this will work I, I would also love to hear why why, um, why, why it, it will not work, and then it's my my job to try to to make it work. Or, or if anyone has a if everyone has some has a mobile phone, this can also be used to then present and see fabrics and garments in yeah. a completely new way. So yeah. at least it's very easily available. Yeah, if you we think. Like uh, 10 years ago, we cannot imagine that we are doing like this chat or this webinar. But you and and are, where are you now? I am in Denmark. In Copenhagen. So, Denmark, over now, we hear everyone just watching and uh, streaming, like everything, it's it's run. And now exactly. it's time to do, because we, if you don't do now, we are just lost in time and, and the, another one is coming with a new, a new technology and another one with a new technology. So, eh, Suli, nosotros estábamos diciendo que tipo, en 10 años, quizás hace 10 años, no estaríamos pensando que íbamos a tener una webinar con un montón de gente participando en streaming y charlando por acá. Entonces, es verdad que el cambio hoy es mucho más acelerado y que muchas veces nosotros nos comprometemos o nos intimidamos eh, nos inhibimos con las tecnologías tipo, ah no, eso no es para mí, no es ahora mi público no va a entender y viene otro y te hace mejor y te hace más rápido y perdemos el tiempo no entonces no percamos el tiempo más porque nada, eso, eso después influye en el consumidor final um, no, Jordan, I want to thank you so much for your talk here for, thank you Ana for your presentation and for the talk, the technology, uh, really. I think that, uh, you know that the first day of the event, Tavex came, uh, came in the event and show us the digital showroom, the virtual mm. showroom uh, of Tavex. It was very nice experience. Uh, they started to surfing in the website and show us everything. And today, when we start this conversation in, in this third day, people said, oh, how can I get in the Tavex virtual showroom? And I said, mm. that's good, because today they want to know your technology. They, they know uh, material exchange, but you and material exchange, maybe in, in the future could, could fix. And I think that we can, we can also do something relevant in Latin America. So, and thank you for your time. And I really cross my things for, for people in here to start to use the technology. Thank you so much, Anna. And please feel free to send me an email or find me on LinkedIn or, or, or contact me if anyone has any questions. Thank you. Thank you. See you. Bye-bye.